Yeah. All right, everybody. We are, we are live here at day two of the ACC kickoff here at the Western here in Charlotte, North Carolina. And uh, <laughs> we have the running back from NC State, Matthew uh, Days, the running back. So, um, Matthew, how's, uh, how's your foot? Because I know last year you uh, missed the rest of the season and the bowl you know, game with the foot injury. How's the foot? Is it 100% and ready to go for a exciting season up there in Raleigh? Yeah, it's 100 percent right now. Our strength staff and our training staff, they did an awesome job of getting me ready to the point that I am right now. And uh, I can't thank them enough for that right now because they did amazing things for me. What was, it, what was the experience like being here for media day, knowing that the stadium was just a couple blocks away where they have the ACC championship game? Is that the ultimate? I know that's everybody's ultimate goal to get to Charlotte to play for the, for the championship to go on to the Orange Bowl. What is your goal? this year, you know, to help your team wolf pack to get there? I mean, just just whatever it takes to win, whatever I can do to sacrifice my body so our team wins. That's what I'm doing, because I'm pretty sure everyone on our team wants to get to Charlotte for this ACC championship game, so doing whatever I can so our, so our team can be in the best position to get there. Uh, Matthew, talk about your uh, style of running. You know, who did you idolize when you were a kid growing up? With, you know, being a running back. You, were you like a Barry Sanders? Were you like a, you know one of the old schools like Walter Payton? You know, who, who did you idolize when you were a kid? Um, um I, I watched the uh, I watched the uh, the movie The Express, and ever since then, Ernie Davis always been my favorite running back. And um, it's always because I can't really find a film of him. I always just watch that movie just. Right. Get a glimpse of what he was like and stuff, but I also love Barry Sanders. Um, I love watching Reggie Bush, and I like watching um, Giovanni Bernard as well. Oh, wow. Steve Bernard's a good uh, fantasy pick down on my fantasy team. Mm -hmm. So I'll send it over to uh, you and Mike. Mm -hmm. Hey, man, I, I know you're, you're the first running back we've had. We had a fullback yesterday, but I'm, I'm a former offensive lineman, okay. so I want to talk about the importance of the continuity. Um, that you have with your offensive line. Do you spend a lot of time with those guys off the field? Yeah, absolutely. I I go to their rooms all the time. We go out to eat all the time. So it's, they got to feel comfortable around you for them to be able to sacrifice their body for you to do good on game day. So you, know, you got to spend as much time with them as possible. Even the new guys that we came and I try to spend more, more time with them just to get to know them so they can get to know me. Because I know they're going to be blocking for me. You know, uh, in the in the off season, um, obviously you're 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 100 percent active. You say, what are some of the other things that you can do as a running back to get you uh, better prepared for your senior season in the off season? I mean, the, the main thing I'm focusing on right now is you know just getting get my blocking better. You know, I'm in a weight room. Um, my bench. <laughs> I appreciate that. But, um, our strength staff did an awesome job this, this offseason. You know, I'm like 45 pounds stronger on the bench, so that, that's awesome. So my blocking should have improved, and that's the main thing I'm just focusing on right now is my blocking. You know, obviously the cliche is take it one day at a time, yeah, one game at a time. But it's hard not to be optimistic. I mean, uh, obviously, uh, most of the talk around here has been about Clemson and Florida State. Do yeah. you feel like uh, playing in the smaller market that sometimes you guys get overlooked? I mean, of course, when you got guys like those, we're, we're bound to get overlooked, but that's all right. We don't have anything to do, so we go out there and we just play our so, you know, We expect to win every week, so we're not going out there to think we're losing or anything. We go out there and expect to be Clemson and Florida State. So, Matt, you know, it's interesting. Uh, one of the things that we talk about a lot um, for you know underclassmen and even seniors going into the NFL is yeah. the importance of blitz pickup. Um, you mentioned that. How do you practice? You know, in terms of city practice, like in, on your blocking, is that something that you can prepare for? Like you know, schemes and defensive blitzes and stuff like that. I mean, that's something you could definitely prepare for blocking, but it's also something that you want to do. You gotta have that mindset that you want to protect your quarterback and stuff like that. So it, it's something to be prepared for, but it's also a mindset as well. Well, man, I was looking at your schedule. Um, looking at your schedule this year, I forgot. I was looking at it last night. Um, is there any games on that that you you, know, you want to improve on? Because I know last year you guys had a, you know a good season, went to a bowl game, you know played really well. So is there like a game on that schedule that you're going to circle and say I want to do better than what I did in the last year? Um, not really. I just want to do good every game, but 
I'm, I'm really looking forward to the Miami game because I have a lot of family coming up to that game and stuff like that. So it should be fun. Did you, I mean, speaking of being in Miami, did you grow up watching Miami as a, as a young kid growing up? Or, or were you like a different you know, type of breed in South Florida? I mean, I wasn't really anyone's fan, to tell the truth. I just watched college football. And, um, I went to a couple of Miami games. And I don't know. I, I like them. They're, they're well, Matthew, uh, good luck for the season. I hope your uh, foot gets, you know, 100% and we hope to see you hopefully down the street. Uh, stay healthy. <laughs> Thanks stay so healthy. much for the time, man. No problem. All right, that's Matthew Davies, the uh, star running back of NC State. We are day two. Like day two of the Masters. We are day two here at the uh, ACC kickoff. Um, if you are listening to us, you can always email us at herbfmradio at gmail.com. And we will love to talk to you all. Yeah, if you have any questions, um, just bring up the uh, our schedule today. Our schedule for this afternoon, and for right now, coming up at 9:30, we got the uh, Louisville quarterback, Lamar Jackson, who uh, ran all over uh, Texas A&M last year at the, uh, the Music City Bowl. I think, still, I think Texas A&M is still trying to catch him. <laughs> and then we uh, Zaire Franklin coming on as well. Uh, he is a uh, kid from. Uh, let me see what's going on. Uh, oh, he's coming from Syracuse, and they got a brand new coach this year as well. So we'll see what we can do. Plus, we'll have some, like we had yesterday. We'll have some surprises, some uh, some people that you're going to shake your head at, and how you get them on the on the show. But we'll, we have a great PR department. You know, <laughs> we'll do anything we can to. Get what we need to get for uh, for the uh, for today to get you guys enjoyable, and we're going to be here till partially three o'clock, and then we'll uh, go back to the uh, the compound and have a nice relaxing day. <laughs> so let's send it a review. It's going to be interesting. Right off the bat, where we get um, you know Louisville's two of their pieces of their dynamic offense. And um, it's interesting when I asked Matt about if he thinks that, you know, Louisville flies under the radar. Um, he seemed to kind of relish that and say, hey, uh, you know, when we beat the prominent teams, you know, we won't be. So it'll be uh, interesting. Lamar is, uh, you know, a true dual threat quarterback. Oh, yeah. Um, with his legs and... You know, sometimes those dual threat quarterbacks, are, you know, they look to run before the pass. And it'll be interesting to see if you ask him what are the things that he's worked on in terms of his pocket presence um, and his vision in the offseason to better prepare him this year. But I'll tell you, Herb, you know, we talk about teams that can challenge, mm -hmm. um, you know, the top dogs. Louisville has got to be right up there. Oh, yeah. Louisville will be up there. Um, let's uh, put the book on NC State. Looking at their uh, schedule, they got a home date against Notre Dame on October 8th. The Irish comes to rally. Then they have to go on the road and take on Clemson and Louisville. And they got Florida State November 5th. And then they got to have the, they had the Canes coming on the 19th. So that's going to be a tough schedule for NC State. Let's see if they can get something and get through the Atlantic Division. But I mean, if you're in the Atlantic Division, you got to get through. That guy can cross the table, Mr. Dabo Sweeney, the defending champ. And then you got Jimbo, who won the national title a couple years ago. you got to get through them, too. And also you know, Louisville to get to you know, Charlotte. So uh, We're going to take a break here, and we'll, we'll see who's coming down the road here soon. And uh, we'll see. We'll, we'll get Lamar Jackson coming, and we'll see whoever, who else we're going to get. You are listening to day two coverage of the ACC kickoff here on HerbFM.com.